Ready? Okay, 99 and a two, 2000. Okay, well, this is a video on two different transmissions, but they're both 4R100 Fords and E4OD. E4OD and 4R100 are the same transmission. E4OD is a little bit more primitive than a 4R100, has a bunch more upgrades such as sensors, speed sensors, and turbine sensor in the front, and all kinds of different things. And it also, some of them have different tail shaft setups as, as well as an E4OD. So a 4R100 is an upgrade uh, to an E4OD. That's it. The basic spinoff of a C6. The reason for making this video is because there's no videos out there on the tail shafts. There's no videos out there on intermediate vibration of a transmission, which is what I was getting from my truck, my, my E350 Super Duty Cargo. Okay, the Transmission in my vehicle is still underneath there, but my tail shaft, you can take the drive shaft off, pull it out, and shake it from side to side. Now this has got a little play. This is a 2000. Mine's a 99. They're basically the same transmission. Exactly the same, except for a few minor differences, like the sensor readouts are from here instead of a wind-up speedo gear that has splines here, where a speedo gear comes in the side and reads. This one reads from a magnetic sensor from the top. Okay? But this tail shaft on this non-rebuilt junkyard year 2000 come out of an E350 cargo van. Or XL. The tiniest, tiniest bit of play. But has mean, hardly no yeah, play no, whatsoever. Not compared to ours. Not compared to ours. You spin a shaft, you can see that it's not bent or anything like that. Now, I'm making this video because there's no videos on taking these things down and checking this tail shaft for an intermediate vibration. Here's the thing. There are three screws, three bolts, and they look like this. I go in here. There's some other videos br briefly Spanish guy or something. He's, he's showing that there are three bolts here in a valve body after the valve body comes down yeah. in the case They look valve like bolt. this Okay now after watching the uh, The uh, Bob Ross of transmissions on Ford on YouTube. I've learned that and thanks to him by the way I've learned that these bolts hold in different things. I've learned how to take this thing apart. For instance, these two bolts hold in the center support here. But they serve as a passageway for fluid also. Right, that's not the important part. The important part is, is that they hold it in here and if they cut, vibrate themselves loose or especially this one here which is a, a I don't know, forward piston, uh, reverse piston. That's piston right there. Right. Piston. So if this one backs itself out, you can lose all forward gears and still have a reverse. Front one. This front one, if it backs itself out through vibration. Well, here's the kicker. I brought my transmission to a Cotman shop two years ago. A Cotman affiliated shop in the city of New Orleans, broken down on a job, traveling state to state. They had it fixed in one day. Charged me $3,200. Put it back together. I checked the inspection plate. I had a new torque converter and the fluid was clean. So I assume they did what they needed to do inside the vehicle. I still had a shimmy, small shimmy between first and second and while accelerating in second gear. Then again at about 70, 75. I figured tires were unbalanced. No. I didn't notice any difference in the shifting. I didn't notice, notice a firmer shift, better clutches or any difference. It felt like my old transmission. I was skeptical. But anyway, I drove it and drove it and drove it until finally this tail shaft housing, this tail shaft itself had gotten so loose that it broke one of my tail shaft housings. My tail shaft housing, which is this one or the other one. It's a side shaft where the Speedo gear comes yeah. out the side. It's got a, yeah, it's is got this a my original? Here. Okay, so... Is that Look, it vibrated the drive shaft so bad that it knocked this bushing out. Extension housing bushing. It pushed the extension housing bushing out and through the seal. And I figured out what happened. They, they took this extension housing off of mine and they replaced the bushing and they replaced the seal and they did all that. And then they looked at the back and did nothing. They probably pulled the valve body and they saw that 
instantly when I told them I lost all forward gears, they probably instantly went in there and tightened these up and got it straight. Our mistake. We said we lost it all of a sudden. I shouldn't have told them I lost it all of a sudden because they would have gotten to the back of the tail and fixed one of the real problems. The reason why this screw vibrated itself out over time, over a five-year period. And the reason why the extension housing bushing did too. Well, that's when it got ultra worse is when this started wobbling really bad. So here's what I got from it. These, these yeah. bushings right here called at the very end rear case bushings rear case bushings they now make a one piece that fills in this two piece bushing set i bet when mine comes to part these are shot and keep in mind there's nothing else inside the transmission holding that from shaking no this, this is just the this, bushings this is the bushings and you get a, a a seal here so my shutter and vibration intermediately and at high speeds was solely because of those bushings not from any bushings on anything else over there, even though the Sunshell gear bushings are supposed to wear out also. Yes. It's a vibration at the tail shaft. So if you want to know how much in play you're supposed to have or play, that's it. And this is already pre-worn out or pre-worn in. I think from, it's a high mileage transmission. This is a high mileage transmission from the junkyard. I don't see any indication that it was rebuilt. Very, very, very minor. It could have been rebuilt, but it probably had a ton of miles on it still. And that's all the shimmy I get? No, up here at the shaft. That's it. If I showed you mine, well, you can grab the drive shaft and go clunk, 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 clunk. You yeah, know, I put shaft and go clunk, clunk. You know Cotman didn't go into this tail and repair and replace those brass bushings, those sleeves. And that's all they needed to do was beat these in and beat them out, these case bushings. But it would have required to take everything out. Just like that. So what they did was they charged me $3,200 to slap me back on the road. And me not knowing the wiser and knowing uh, uh, being too intimidated to take an automatic transmission apart, this is what I got. This right here. Take a look at it. This is what it's called. The shaft. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you one more symptom that I was getting since the beginning. Sometimes coming back down to a stop. It felt like the transmission was trying to push me forward as it was downshifting. It was still trying to push the vehicle forward as, as if it was engaged. I'm going to, without being a transmission expert whatsoever, I'm going to say that this tail shaft got so loose, you know, the shaft got so loose that... The, the, Keep in mind, this is a donor transmission. It's right. This is this is not the R. the one that we're fixing to pull out and make a real angry video about. Um, this is a mild video compared to that. Here is the. What would this be considered? <clears throat> okay. Um. Hold on. That's one of the last things you pulled out, right? Yes, yeah, with Bob okay, Ross. Okay. It's said. either a forward. Uh, it's either a forward drum assembly, like okay. I, I think that's if the clutches and that are smoked. Then you lose all forward gears. Yeah, okay. Well, see this thing right here? This is like a sprag or something. A one-way, kind of kind of a one-way sprag. Now, that thing with bolt holes in it is supposed to come out. That's a, right, in watch. a race. No, it's 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 a solid piece of... Uh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, solid piece. Okay, and its job is to rotate one way on here. There's five 11 millimeter bolts holding it in behind that shaft right there. Right. And if this... This, these splines right here are sitting on my output shaft that already has worn out bushings on the tail on the end. It's throwing this thing sideways like this, causing my transmission to push me forward when I'm coming back down to a red light. So if you want to know if you have bad bushings in the tail of your transmission, just crawl up underneath your vehicle, take your drive shaft at the bottom, and shake it up and down. And if you get an up and down out of it, out of the yoke More than itself. More like an eighth or a quarter of an inch. Not even, Not even close a quarter. to that. <laughs> no, but like an eighth of an inch. Look, let me show you an example. If, you, out if yoke. you take your worn out, if you take your yoke, the drive shaft's attached, you stick your underneath your truck, and your extension housing is on. Let's just say you have an extension housing like uh, the one that came off this transmission, which is right here, a top mount. Yeah, that's the more modern 4R100s. Most, right. most people should have that. Okay. And you got your seal right here. And this is this is 
maximum amount of play you should have. That's it. Mine goes almost all the way over to the bushing. In fact, that's the old draw shaft yoke right there. Yeah. It got so bad. Jeez, I can't even get this son of a bitch out. It got so bad that it burnt my drive shaft yoke and put a, a score in it right here. I don't here. know if you can see it, but it's bent. It's a deep bend gouge right here that you can divot in. You can put your, your finger in. On this side, there's nothing. So as it was rotting and rotating, hate the draw shaft. It yoke. was <laughs> the, 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 the transmission guts were causing this shaft to lean down and drive like that. And causing this to rub wear against the tail shaft. Probably against the bushing too. So it fried bushing. the tail shaft. And this is why you got so many damn different tail shafts you can buy online. Because this problem happens. Training shops skip what they need to do and change these case bushings. And then you have this tail shaft issue. And you might not know it. You mean the extension bushings, right? Yeah, the... the, the the, they uh, skip over the case bushings and choose just the extension housing. Right. And you might not know it, but when it finally catches up, you, you got, gosh knows what you're going to find inside. Nobody knows what you're going to find inside. You know, a bunch of torn up gears, planetary gears, things like that. And or your drive shaft on the highway. Yeah, it could have left my drive shaft stuck in the concrete pulling all the concrete out of the ground and pole vaulting me in the air. I don't know what it could have done, but I guess it, I'm lucky that it, that didn't happen and I caught it before that because of the shimmy. When it gets so bad that, and you don't address the problem, the truck feels like you're running over those emergency not, lane, those emergency lane uh, dips in the road to tell you you're veering off the highway, get back on the highway. It feels like that at a certain speed when it gets so bad when it shutters then your extension housing bushings either out or in yeah mine mine took off out of the case and then when we replaced it and it I, shot in the case that I, time. I replaced <laughs> it again and it took off in the case the, the next time only it only took 24 hours for that to happen that's because the tail shaft bushings have had it so the case bushings have had it so i'm looking at probably replacing my case with this case because those bushings are probably worn out so bad it might have eaten into the aluminum or warped the aluminum like it like it did my tail shaft it stretched my aluminum now i can just almost slide in or beat in with a rubber hammer the the real sleeve that goes in in my tail shaft usually you gotta destroy so, them to get them out yeah so i had to order another tail shaft because of this problem these people cost me more money uh and more headache for their cheap repair for for thirty two hundred dollars. So, so for thirty two hundred dollars, I got a torque converter and some some Merc five. If I was lucky, I probably got Dextron Merc on out of a fifty five gallon drum. Is probably what I really got, and that's it. And I got some bolts tightened that I could have done myself. So this is just a lesson for a Cotman affiliated shop. And yeah. anyone else that's wondering once, why they got a... Once I pull mine shirt. out and I find out what I know exists, once I, I'm going to name the name of the shop in the next video. <laughs>